I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Calm oh, down. Get a hold of yourself. Stewardess, please let me handle this. I've got to get out of here. Calm down. Now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Doctor, you want another phone? Everything's going to be all right. Please. Sister, please. 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 Sister, please. 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 There is no question that the original Hades is one of the most influential games of the last decade. While not the originator of the roguelike genre, it introduced it to a much wider audience, in a package that delighted both the ears and the eyes, and I bet the physical release was pretty tasty as well. <coughs> Hades is a superb game, and set a really high bar with Supergiant Games and their next entry in the series, and first ever sequel. A tall order, but if anyone could follow up Hades, it would be the guys who inject every game they develop with astonishing amounts of beauty and supremely crafted game design. Expectations are high, but do they stick the landing, even now in early access? Let's talk about it, starting with the aesthetics. Visually, Hades 2 retains the original's Louvre-worthy art style. The visual design and animations are drop-dead gorgeous, and even the art of unfinished characters and areas outdo a lot of final designs in other games. Hades 2's world goes in two different directions, with a journey into the underworld which mirrors the first game, and a journey to the surface world. The execution of the art is excellent. We get to see the team here tackle areas and places unlike anything in the first game. There is one shortcoming in the realm of visual design, and that for me was the morning fields, they just come off a little bit bland. This isn't helped by the fields having some of the biggest levels ever in a Hades game, with these addition of multi-boon rooms. I enjoy it on a gameplay front with these little segmented battles across a wider area, but visually, it just isn't for me. As you'd expect, the characters though are exquisitely designed. While sharing an art style, they each stand out from one another, and they all come off as unique. I really appreciate the little touches that hint at potential story elements that are yet to be explored and I'm excited to explore, like Melanoi's missing arm or Chaos seemingly holding the old Chaos's head in their hands. It's interesting and it makes you want to learn more. The updated but similar art style keeps the game tied into the world of the first game that came to life six years ago, while still feeling refreshed. As we are so close at time of recording to the launch of Early Access, some characters remain unimagined in the art style, or with rough versions present. This isn't a deal breaker for me, and even creates moments of unintentional humour where Narcissicus? Narc he's a narcissist, okay? Well, he's self-obsessed, he's vain, he spends his entire game admiring his own reflection. He ends up represented by a big green Nazgul, so it's perfect. Overall, Supergiant Games might have some of the most talented artists in the industry, and the art remains very wall hangable. Which brings us to sound design. Attack sounds feel punchy, all the ambient design and music hits really well. I love the callbacks to the original Hades with pieces of music from the first game with minor mix-ups. You'll find a, a piece of music where there's a couple of additional notes, sometimes interspersed in the middle of a, a bit, I don't know, musical terms. But when you hear it as a Hades fan, it brings a little smile to your face. The series tradition of packing its soundtrack with bangers is alive and well, and goes one step further when it unveils its band boss fight, where the music changes based on which members of the band have been taken out. The sequence is the studio playing into its strengths. When it comes to the story, I don't want to talk too much about it, I don't want to give too much away, but let's talk about how it's delivered as well as some elements of it. Characters are found between runs in a hub world and within the world itself. Each boon you receive is a potential story nugget. No roguelike commits this much effort to world building, characters and narrative quite like Hades. I love Hades 2's story. In short, the world established in the first game has been thrown on its head. Melanoi, our protagonist, is driven by a quest for vengeance and also obligation to her newly discovered family. 
pulled in two different directions through an interwoven story. Whereas the first game was more of an escape movie, this is very much a war movie with intrigue and subterfuge. For those invested in the stories of Zagreus, Persephone, Hades and Nyx and co, the story will hit extra hard. I haven't completed the story of Hades 2. Notoriously in Hades 1 you had to beat the final boss 10 times to reach a, some sort of conclusion, and even then not really. The story progressed beyond that point, it was kind of just the start of the final chapter really. This game feels bigger, and the story has a lot more road to walk. I have beaten the final boss of Hades 2, not 10 times like in Hades 1, and I feel like it's setting us up for something similar, so expect there to be a lot of story. While I appreciate the delivery of on the boons and in the hub world, sometimes you can get into that roguelike brain where you're just like, you just want to go, 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 go. And you kind of have to control yourself a little bit or else you'll miss huge story beats. We come to the biggest talking point of this video, and of course it is gameplay, which is the most important part of any game. Like its older brother, Hades 2 is a roguelike. Its controls are as smooth as ever and its gameplay loop doesn't stray too far from the established formula. A series of biomes, each with its own boss, followed by a big bad at the end of the game. Or at the end of each run, I should say. It differentiates itself from its predecessor in a few key ways. The original Hades was primarily a melee-focused game, and Hades 2 is primarily a spellcasting game, with a mana game mechanic having been added to it. Enemies are designed with this in mind, and are far more aggressive in their pursuits of you, and tend to pack far more armor than in the previous game. As the biomes progress, the game continues to push the combat in ways which deny distance, either through smoke shrouds, ranged attacks, or the aforementioned aggression. Spell casting in a lot of games allows you to sit back and rarely be harassed, not so much in Hades 2, where you will be constantly kept on your toes. You can get away with playing Keep Away in the first biome, but from 2 onwards you'll be pursued and constricted in your movement um, in Oceanus, and later in the morning fields given plenty of space but with the most aggressive warriors and powerful ranged attackers in the whole game. The design makes sense, but can quickly expose your run's weaknesses if you don't have the tools or the firepower to significantly reduce the headcount in any given encounter quickly. Each weapon has a standard attack, a special attack, and a cast like in Hades 1. Each attack all have an Omega version which costs mana, which tend to hit more enemies, do more damage, and add additional effects. The cast is completely different in this game. Uh, in the previous game, it was a throwable object, originally like a blood gem, but if you got certain certain boons, you could, you could change that up. Here it's always an AoE ground attack, which slows enemies that step into it and can also damage them. This move is key to a good run. If you can't make space and openings for attacks, it's over, and the move is the starting place for making that space. Upgrades in this game follow a similar trajectory to the first. Instead of the mirror, which is your consistent across-run upgrades, you now have tarot cards. These take resources to unlock, like in the previous game, and then other resources to upgrade. In your runs, you get your boons from the gods, a concept embraced by many roguelikes. While not originating in Hades, boons has become shorthand for your expendable upgrades. That's how impactful this game is, it's like souls like. No matter what souls like I play, when you drop your souls, it's always souls. These boons return, but with a new cast of gods and seemingly a reduced focus, with far more resource rooms present on runs than in the previous game. Which is a bit of a shame, as for most people, myself included, this is the favourite part of anyone playing a game in this genre. This is adjustable through upgrades, but let's get to that. Finally, there are strangers along the way who offer heals, armor, and other upgrades to your character. All of this is grand except for the foreshadowing that we've had in the past few paragraphs, which is resources. In the previous game, we had a few resources, darkness, chaphonic keys, and gifts for your companions, being the main ones. Here you have ancient bones, which is your replacement for darkness as a general currency, but can no longer be used for upgrades. That's now ashes. Psyche, or ectoplasm as I've christened it in my runs, is for upgrading your maximum allowed upgrades in a run. You can't just pick what you want from a list anymore, you need to have enough ectoplasm for all of the upgrades you'd like. You also have a number of retrievable items in the level in the form of seeds, fish, and ore. 
You can only gather one type of these per run by bringing a shovel, fishing rod, or pickaxe, or if you have a pet with you, they can fulfill one of those needs. You then have Fate Fabric, Cinders for beating the first boss, Pearl for beating the second boss, Tears for beating the third, similar to the first game, Shadows that you can craft, and um, there is a lot of resources in this game. When I first wrote this, I, I called this bloating. And I do agree with my original sentiment, but I have played a few more hours since I started the script, and I'm kind of coming around to it a little bit more. This Hades game feels like it wants to be treated more as an RPG in this area. It is frustrating to only be able to bring one tool at a time. So if you're resource gathering, you can't really have a multi-purpose run. And with me being too honorable to let myself die to a scrub in the forest just because I've collected enough mushrooms, goddammit, that means that there can be a lot of grinding in this game. A lot more than in the previous game. Pair that with the new limited number of boon offerings, and you have a game that requires many more runs for Melanoi to reach her full potential than it did for, say, Zagreus. Now, some of these elements, I would say, with the resources have improved, and that would be around weapons and aspects. In the first game, you could only upgrade your aspects by defeating Hades over and over and over again. In this one, you can use other resources, and it's a little bit resource lighter to get these upgraded. Once you unlock aspects you'll probably already have a lot of the resources that you need to upgrade a few of them straight away so that one is a bonus around resources i think it maybe just needs a little bit more balance there because right now it does feel like there's a lot of stuff in the game for those upgrades and when you have two separate paths two separate runs and you need things from both to upgrade your weapons yeah it can feel like a lot but as I was saying, I've spent a little bit more time with the game now, and I think I'm maybe feeling this uh, resource management a little bit better. I do think it needs a little bit of work. The same story with the tarot cards. It takes a lot of resources to upgrade those. That, I think, could definitely be lightened, even just a little bit. Overall, it did pain me to have a couple of negatives there. And it's a hard comparison to make, where I feel like Hades 1 might just be a perfect game. The franchise is something really important to me. Just ask my cats Zagreus and Persephone. While I have a few irks, I'm so glad that the overall package of Hades 2 hits. The bits that annoy me just fall away as I'm playing, and the further I get into the game, those things just irked me less. Hopefully the resource gathering elements do get a little bit of attention before full release. Compared to other early access games, this feels like 75-80% to 80 done. Though there's elements to the story I haven't experienced, so I don't know about there, but as an overall package, there's so much here, it's mad. The core and the fundamentals are just fantastic. In the time it's taken me to write this script from start to finish, I've been putting in like 10 hours on the side, and getting to my first defeat of, of the main boss, um, which we haven't talked about too much here, I don't want to talk about too much here. I think there's so much that can be enjoyed for the first time, so I'm trying to not give too much away. I honestly haven't put it down since release, and I don't plan on putting it down for a while, so if this is the last time you hear of me for a little bit, um, please don't worry about me. I'm just, I'm just all over Hades 2. <laughs> this is the longest video that I've ever made so far, and the reason is just there's so much about this game I love, and so much about this game which is just phenomenal. Um, I'm so glad that it just really lives up to what the original set out. I think that might be the best honor that I can bestow upon this game. A worthy sequel to Hades? I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to say it's better than Hades 1 or if I prefer it more to Hades 1, but the potential is there. We'll really see what it looks like on full release and see, you know, how many hours we rack up once we've got a full game in place. So yeah, in the end, play it. Play Hades 2. It's awesome. But here's the big question. What is your favorite god boon, from the first or the second game? Let me know. Or your favorite Daedalic Hammer? They're back too, I forgot to mention them in amongst everything else, but uh, they're just as awesome as ever. So let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, um, and if you're a roguelike appreciator, do drop us a like, do drop us a subscribe. It's like 90% of what I review are what roguelikes, the other 10% are survivor likes, which are basically roguelikes, but I'll see you next time in the house of Zadies. Bye.